Hello, this is Matthew from Simply Learn, and today we're going to dig into Docker Swarm. So what we're going to do in this session is we're going to go through what a Docker and Docker container is and why you'd want to use it. We'll then break out what are the characteristics and structure of a Docker Swarm environment. And then finally, we'll go through and do a demo using actual code in the command line interface to actually run and build out the main functions and commands that you would use for a Docker Swarm environment. So with that said, let's get started. So Docker is a tool that we actually use to help automate applications in our environment so that we have a consistent way that we're actually building and testing and validating codes that's being created. Think of it as a virtualization, but much more sophisticated and efficient way of doing virtualization. The thing that you have that's a huge advantage when you're working with Docker is that it's a very lightweight software package. It allows you to have all of the tools needed for actually running the code without having to have the significant overhead that you would normally have with virtualization. So one of the characteristics you have with Docker is that you can actually run multiple Docker environments in the same host environment. And for you to be able to do this, we had to figure out how this would actually run. And so to actually do this, we actually do what's called a Docker Swarm. And a Docker Swarm is an environment where you can actually have multiple Docker images running on the same host operating system. So you can have running in each of those Docker containers different solutions. So let's dig into what a Docker Swarm is. So a Docker Swarm is essentially a tool that allows you to very easily create and schedule multiple Docker nodes. So really two or more Docker nodes. And you can have quite a large number of uh, Docker nodes in a single swarm. Uh, each node itself is actually a Docker daemon. And that daemon is able to then interact with the Docker API and have all the benefits of being a full Docker environment. One of the other advantages you have is that the uh, each Docker container within the swarm can then be deployed and managed but as a node in that entire clustered environment. So what we have here is a breakdown of the five key elements within a Docker environment. You have the Docker container, you have the daemon, the Docker images, and the Docker client and Docker registry. So the Docker daemon itself is what does all the work interacting with the actual host operating system to be able to manage the Docker containers. So if we look here, here we have set up an environment where we have three Docker containers being run with Docker. And what we want to be able to do is be able to interact with the environment because what would happen if we actually have something change in our environment. So we have the environment set up as a Docker swarm and one of our containers fails. What we're able to do is use the swarm to be able to correct that failure. So the Docker swarm manager is able to come in and reschedule containers. And as you would imagine, the actual swarm node has full backups and full redundancy for any kind of failures that would happen. And we would do all of this work through command line interface. So let's go through some of the features that you have within the actual Docker swarm itself. So a key feature for Docker Swarm is that it is fully decentralized, which means that it makes it very easy for teams to be able to access and manage the environment. As you would expect as well, is that the communication that happens between the manager and client nodes within the Swarm is highly secure. And of course, this is really just a fundamental that you should have for any kind of solution. But it is good to know that Docker Swarm has that built in. There is also auto load balancing within your environment and you can actually script that into how you write out and structure your swarm environment. And that load balancing then also allows you to then convert that swarm environment into a highly scalable infrastructure. And then rollback task allows you to be able to roll back environments to previous safe environments. So if say something that does get pushed out and something breaks, you're able to immediately roll back into a safe environment. So each of the containers are pushed out and, and are controlled using services. And they actually happen to be REST services, which make it very easy for you to be able to integrate within your environment. And each of the different services contains a group of containers of the same image. 
Now, by having this structure, it allows you to be able to scale your application appropriate to the demands on your service. So if you have a service that needs to have a significantly larger number of services for it to run, you can actually scale that appropriately and that can be either geo or demand based. One of the requirements for setting up a Docker Swarm is you must have at least one node deployed. So the way that the architecture is set up is that you have a manager node and a, a client node, and there must be one of each for the entire environment to be able to work effectively. So, you know, here we are just jumping ahead of sales a little bit. We have two types of nodes in a Docker Swarm. We have the manager node and we have the worker node, which is the client that does the actual uh, execution of the tasks. The manager node, very similar to other systems that we've talked about on Simply Learn, allows you to actually control and manage the actual tasks that are being executed by the worker nodes. And the worker nodes, as you can imagine, then actually execute the instructions that the manager are sending out to it. So here we have a situation where we can illustrate what would happen with a manager node sending out commands to different worker nodes. The manager is fully aware of the status of the entire swarm environment at all times. This is because of the two-way secure communication that's going from the manager to the worker environment. The workers, as you'd expect, are accepting tasks that are being sent from the manager. So if the manager sends out a task saying that you need to be running as a MySQL environment, then the worker node will then convert to a MySQL environment. And all of these environments are scripted and controlled by you as the manager. The actual worker nodes themselves actually have a client agent and that client will then communicate all different states of the infrastructure back to the manager so that any time the manager node is in full control of the entire swarm. The manager is the controller of this environment and so you always want to be able to ensure that the manager has full access to all of the work that's happening within the swarm and this allows you as the manager to be able to control your swarm and very quickly be able to react to any changes without having to rely on manual installations of software and hardware. And as we covered earlier on, there is a REST API that uses the communication over HTTP from the manager to the worker node. It's interesting to note that it is a REST API because if you wanted to, you could actually integrate that API into custom applications and even then create automated Docker images to be created on demand from third party solutions that you may want to create. So one of the things that's a really ad a big advantage with having a swarm is that once you've actually created the swarm, any of the services um, that you create can be accessed by any node of the same cluster. One of the things you do have to do though is you have to specify what container image that you're going to use when you're creating a new service. And you can do that either through a centralized Docker Hub environment or through your own private Docker Hub environment. One of the things that's interesting is that you can set up uh, commands and services to be either global or replicated. A global service will allow you to run a service consistently on every node within the swarm whereas a replicated service will only push out functionality and tasks to specific worker nodes within a swarm. So you may be asking yourself, hey, isn't a service and task the same thing? No, they're, they're kind of not in the Docker world. And the difference is, is a service is a description of a task or the state, whereas the actual task is the work that needs to get done. And that's the differentiator here. So what you can do as a Docker user is you actually create services and then you can then define when you want them to start as tasks. Now, what's interesting is that when you do assign a task to a node, that same task cannot be assigned to another node. Also, what's interesting is that you can actually have multiple managers within a Docker Swarm environment. If you do, however, go down this path, you have to elect one manager to be the primary manager and the other managers to be secondary managers. In many ways, those secondary managers are really similar in concept to worker nodes in which they have the capability of a manager, but they are dependent on that single primary manager to be able to provide the right instructions and for services and tasks to the entire swarm environment. So if we kind of recap some of these, we have a command line interface, which allows us to create and connect via APIs. And that those APIs that we connect to in our swarm environment allows us to do orchestration via tasks and services. 
the task allocation allows us to allocate work to tasks via their IP address, which allows them to execute them on the work. And then the worker nodes themselves have to connect to the manager node to be able to check for when tasks come in so that they are keeping a consistent communication back and forth across the entire swarm. And then the final stage is to actually execute the tasks that have been assigned from the manager node to the worker node so that you have a successful execution of the solution you're looking to build. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and we're going to do a demo. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a demo and showing how you can run Docker Swarm. For this, you'll need to have both a virtual environment running your manager and your working environment. So here we have our worker and uh, here we have our manager. So we're just going to open up terminal window and we're going to go into the manager for terminal window. So the following command here is used to initialize Docker Swarm. I'm just going to type this in. So sudo docker swarm init and we put the IP address for the network we're connecting to. And we'll put in our password. And here we have now connected. And this is our manager node. And what we want to be able to highlight is the specific token which identifies the Docker Swarm environment. And this is our token right here. So we're going to copy that because we'll need to use that for our worker environment. So here we are in the worker environment and we'll use the token that we just copied um, as a way to be able to connect to the manager and connect to the Docker Swarm environment. And so sudo, we'll paste in the Docker Swarm and we'll join that. And we now, here we shows that we have joined the Swarm environment as a worker. And now let's we're in the manager, we can actually show that we actually have that worker in the environment. So there's Docker node ls to list out all of the items in that environment. Sorry, we actually did that in the wrong area. So we're on the right sudo docker node ls to list out all the nodes in the swarm. And there you are, you see we've actually connected the worker to the manager node and both are active and the manager is the leader and the worker virtual box is in the swarm. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and create a new service. So Docker Swarm create, and we're gonna just change the name to hello world for the new service. And we're gonna use the Alpine image from docker.com. Takes just a moment for it to run. There we go. And there we go, services converged. So what we have now is a new service that has been created. Let's go ahead and we'll list out the services. And here we have our new Hello World service. And we go ahead and check the Docker containers and we're going to do Docker PS and Here's our Alpine, it's running the latest image, and that's the Docker container ID. And we can see that it was just updated. And so what we're gonna do is use the same command in the worker node and make sure everything is working over there. So go over to our worker, paste that in. So what we see here is there is no image or container created because it's not in the worker node, it would be in the manager node. So we can go ahead and create the new service. And we're gonna make the mode global and that way the uh, service is available across all of the swarm. So we're just gonna execute that work. It takes a moment. And there we are. Done. Work has been completed. And we have the two different IDs, which shows the two different services running. And if we go back to the worker mode and we run sudo docker ps again, and there we are. Now we see that we have the hello world new virtual environment has been added with the image of Alpine. And we also have the new token ID for that. If we want to kill a node from the swarm, we can use the following command, which is sudo docker swarm leave dash dash force and that will force 
the nodes to leave the swarm. Thank you for hanging with us here as we go through a Docker Swarm architecture. I hope you've learned some great new techniques that allow you to hopefully effectively manage a Docker Swarm environment. If you have any questions, please post them below in the comments. If you like this video, we have new videos coming out all the time. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And then if you want to get notified, select the bell and uh, we'll get you notifications of every new video that we have when it comes out. This is Matthew from Simply Learn and looking forward to seeing you next time. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.